Today we're going to be looking at how to remove and replace a tilt trim motor on a 96 Evinrude 140. Um, as you can see, this trim motor's in rough shape, got quite a bit of rust. Um, this even a little soft there. Now the trim motor still works, which is good because it means that we can easily get the motor up and down without having to use the manual screw. Um, if you do need to get your motor up and down um, without the trim motor being functioning, um, this screw in there will allow you to do that. Um, that will allow you to release uh, the motor so that you can move it up and down. But we're going to go ahead and get this off. In order to do this, uh, we're actually going to have to take um, the tilt pin, which is right here. Uh, we're going to be taking that out. That will allow us to slide this whole uh, tilt trim mechanism forward because we need to get to all four screws. There's one right here, there's one right there, and then there's two in the back. You can get to these three pretty easily, but the one that's all the way in the back corner there, which is hard to see, that one uh, you cannot easily get to without tilting this out or taking the motor off. So uh, tilting this out is going to be the easier way to do it usually. So first things first is get this uh, tilt pin out. And that's usually not a fun job. That's usually pretty difficult depending on how old the motor is and how corroded everything is. So uh, that's our first task. What we're going to do is we're going to take off their sir clips on both sides. And then we're going to have to uh, beat that pin out. Uh, we're going to try and take some of the weight off of the motor first before we start doing that. That should help a little bit. So we're going to get started. First thing that we want to do is put our Alright, that should take a little bit of the weight off of it. And uh, let me get my tools and we'll get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a tool like this. These are uh, sort of clip pliers and you see they have these tiny ends and what they do is they go into the holes on this clip and that's going to allow us to put a little pressure which opens up that clip. Let me try doing this with my other hand. It'll be a little bit easier. Um, so we're going to put, put our pliers in the holes there and then open that clip up. And just be careful you don't lose that clip because these things can sometimes shoot out of the way since under pressure. Now what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to leave the other clip on the other side in place for now. So what I'm going to do is we need to beat this pin straight back that way. And so that's going to, hopefully this pin's going to move pretty easily, but I'm not betting on that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take uh, some type of uh, mallet and then something to push against that and just tap that out. And hopefully we can get that out pretty easily. All right, so I was able to get it out. It actually wasn't too bad. So you can see once you beat that through, the whole tilt trim mechanism kind of leans down which will hopefully give us enough just enough room to get to the back screw there so uh, this is what i used i used a small mallet i uh, used a, an extension here but you know you could find pretty much anything stuff and then just kind of beat it through to the other side as you can see you got a little bit of corrosion on there i will be cleaning that up with some sandpaper um, before I put it back in just to make it easier if it ever has to be taken out again and uh, I will be kind of putting some uh, white lithium grease on that when I put it through I'll try and clean up these holes as well uh, when I put it back in but all right so I'm going to get to work trying to get to those four bolts and see if we can get this tilt trim motor out um, I am replacing it um, with an Arco uh, part number 6241. I like the Arco motors. They're a little bit more expensive, but when it comes to electrical parts, some of the best 
marine electrical parts you can buy these Arco products. So that's what I'm going to be replacing it with. So we'll uh, get to work on this. All right, I was able to get all of the four screws off. It wasn't that bad. Um, what I used was a 3 8 socket, um, a real small one, and you're just able to get it back in there and turn it. Um, so it actually wasn't too bad. Um, I know these things can really be a pain, especially if the, uh, the bolts don't really want to move, but um, this one wasn't too bad. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, break this free. It's kind of fused to this. We're gonna have to tap it with a mallet. Um, you just need to be really careful. You don't want any of this shavings or dirt to get down into that um, hydraulic system there. Um, that'll really screw your day up if you do. So we gotta be really careful when removing this, not to get anything in there, but probably gonna have to tap it a couple times to get it loose and then we'll pop that off and we should be able to get the new one on there. All right, sorry I didn't get video putting it in, but it's hard to do, hold a camera and um, get this thing in there and fastened. So basically what I did was I needed to take the sender here off because this wire for the tilt trim motor runs behind that. So that's just two bolts, one right there, one right there at the top. That just pops out. Then you can run your wire back through. Uh, the other thing that you have to note here is the ground wire. When you're putting this back together, make sure that you don't forget to put that, fasten that ground wire down to that bolt. Uh, the bolt back there, I would say that was tougher to get back in than it was to take out on this particular engine. Um, but you know, you're, um, situation will probably vary there um, but I did put some a little touch of lithium grease on all these bolts that I put back in uh, just in case these ever have to get taken off these were in good shape the bolts didn't have any rust or anything on them but uh, I put some lithium grease on there just in case uh, but the motor is back on there and fastened I ran the wire through that hole um, at this point um, I basically the wire is run out through here and then it goes up through this uh, like this loom here and that's not going to be fun to do so basically I got to run the green and blue wire through up this loom and then up underneath and then down there through that hole if I can get this thing to focus um, so when it comes through that hole then what it's going to do is it's going to plug into this right here and so in order to get these ends to plug into that there is a little plastic adapter that you put it through i'm not sure what i did with it at the moment um, here it is okay, so basically you you run the green and blue wire up through that adapter then they go in there now that was a little bit of a pain to get out so what you have to do to release the old wires is you have to actually take a like a real small like flathead screwdriver and run it down this groove and push down and then at the same time pull the wire out and then it comes out but these two are going to go back through there but you don't want to put this on until after you've gotten the wires up and through the the access in the bottom there because obviously getting this through this loom is going to be really difficult. Uh, but once you get this run up through there and I get this connector on, I'll be able to connect it into that right there. And then I should be able to test it out. So uh, let me work on that and uh, we'll be back in a second. All right. So um, all buttoned up down there with the trim motor. And what I did was in order to lower the motor back down to make it easier to run the wiring, um, I just took the two open wires here and I just directly connected them to this um, connector right here. That allows you to power up and power down and it also acts as a good test before you fully wrap everything up to make sure that the motor can go up and down and it seemed to work fine. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the wiring through here uh, this has been probably the toughest part of the whole project, to be honest. I may end up replacing this because I had to cut it to get it, and then eventually I just pulled it out. 
what I'm doing is I'm using a uh, fish tape and I basically ran the fish tape down there. I connected the other end to this wiring and I'm gonna pull the wiring using the fish tape all the way up and through there. Hopefully that goes all right. And so once I do that, then I should be able to add, put the wires in the connector and then button everything up and uh, you know refill the um, hydraulic fluid. Make sure it's all topped off, ready to go. So uh, we'll run these wirings and then we'll come back and give it a test. Okay, I was right. Running the wiring was the worst part of this whole process. Um, it was not fun um, trying to get that wiring through there. You can take off this whole side uh, panel here. Um, if you want to make it easier, um, you kind of have to weigh the difficulty of taking this off versus having to fish that through. Not sure what I would do if I had to do this a second time, but um, so as you can see, I put the wires back into the adapter, plug the adapter in. So now it's just a matter of kind of button buttoning this all up. I'll come back and zip tie that stuff, keep it down. But now let's go ahead and give it a test. So here we go, running nice and smooth. And I haven't yet topped off the um, hydraulic fluid. Uh, so that'll actually be done here. Um, I did open up the cap to check the level and a little spilled out as you can see there. So actually you just take this cap off and while your boat is level, you top it off. Um, and then what you do is after you top it off with hydraulic fluid, then you raise and lower it like five or six times to try and force those air bubbles out. And then you top it off a little bit more and then you do that. You do that about three times um, to get all the air out of the system. Once you do that, you should be in good shape. Um, so as you can see, we got our uh, tilt trim motor installed and operating. And so hopefully this video is helpful. Wish I could have, um, you know, filmed while I was doing a lot of these tasks, but unfortunately I have one hand and no tripod. And so trying to do that was tough, but hopefully just the steps of what needs to be done is helpful for everybody. Um, so, uh, good luck.